Good evening, Earth Science students. Today's teaching point, or tonight's teaching point, to draft plans for a seawall surrounding Lower Manhattan. The do now will be to read the article slightly to yourself and consider the question, do you think all states prone to tropical storms slash hurricane damage should have the same policies regarding how insurance companies cover damages? If yes, explain. If not, explain. This is going to be the opening do now exercise for Tuesday's uh, activity. So I'm going to go to the next slide. You can preview the article for yourself. Again, you're going to be reading this in class as part of the do now, but I'm just going to show it to you right now for your viewing pleasure. And here it is. Sandy's insurance issues. I am not going to read this. You're just, you can just pause the video right now and review it at your leisure. Again, we're doing this as probably do now, and we'll get into a discussion on it in class for that day. So just a really fast review on climate change and storms. So we saw this graph. A growing body of evidence shows that the, the climate change is increasing the number of hurricanes and their overall strength. You can see here uh, we have all tropical storms. And we can see, you know, if, if you put a best fit line over this blue uh, trend here, you, you can see increasing. And uh, just, you know, just today I was looking at this again, and there is an incredible spike right here, which I hadn't noticed before. Oh, well, that, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty intense. Uh, I, I hadn't noticed it before. It actually goes well off the graph, maybe 30 uh tropical storms that's that's pretty intense so maybe something new is happening uh something new that hasn't happened in the last 150 years it seems but you know it could be an anomaly uh as time goes on i'm sure this spike here can be put into a bigger context but anyway uh so hurricanes and storm surges so storms make the sea level temporarily rise causing areas to flood we all saw this with hurricane sandy and if you watch the Weather Channel or at all aware of what it's like when a storm comes in from off the ocean, uh, you know, people who live near oceans or, you know, live near bays have to take precautions. And there are a number of things they can do. But for Hurricane Sandy, you know, it, it, it really took us uh, by surprise in some ways. I don't think anyone expected for there, to, for there to be that much damage, uh, but there certainly was. So, engineers and other scientists have proposed the idea of building both removable and permanent seawalls. I mean, I've heard of both ideas being uh, put forth, you know, in, in, in my reading uh, of these types of things. Uh, and it's, it's to prevent the devastation. You know, Hurricane Sandy, I think the estimated total damage was on the orders of 30 to 50 billion, I think I've heard $50 billion in, in damage. And that goes for New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, New York, Long Island, like the whole smash, like about $50 billion. So so that's a lot of money. So maybe building a seawall, you know, uh, you know, we have a picture here of, of a nice, uh, we have this, you know, kind of concave seawall here, you know, that can prevent a, a lot of damage, uh, you know, from these, uh, from these waves that come up onto shore and destroy homes and businesses and property. And so drafting your seawall, because because that's what we're going to do here. We're, we're going to put together first the dimensions. Uh, the length of your seawall is going to be the perimeter of the region being protected. So in the case of your assignment, it will be lower Manhattan. And, I'll, and I'm going to show you a, uh, a graph, uh, not a graph, uh, a picture of what that area looks like. It'll be on the packet that you'll see tomorrow. So you'll measure that. The width we're going to say is one meter. I'm just going to just, you know, I just arbitrarily decide. Well, not arbitrarily, but I decided that one meter. And the height of the wall is going to be three meters. And composition. 
So you'll have five choices, and I've outlined them here below. Natural rock, masonry, wood, steel, and concrete, each with a different strength. So you can see here the strength that has been calculated for you is in joules per metered, um, per meter squared, uh, per meter squared, per, uh, per meters cubed. So joules is, is energy, and we're looking at uh, for a volume, right, for, for, for every volume. So tomorrow you will be calculating the length uh, and volume of your seawall. You're going to decide the material you're going to use. And you're going to use all that information to then calculate the cost of the materials for your seawall, uh, how much surge energy your wall will absorb, so that's like the strength, per wave, and the total energy of the first surge wave that, that comes in. So let's look at it, you know, a, a, an example, because tomorrow we're going to do Lower Manhattan, but let's go through an example of Long Beach. Now, if any of you have been to Long Beach, you know that the beach is right along the bottom here. And when you go into the property over here, the elevation doesn't change too much. So when a storm comes in, it just, I mean, it, it, it destroys the homes in the area. So, you know, so during Hurricane Sandy, uh, I actually had some friends that had to be evacuated out of here and their car, their house, you know, their couch, you know, their, their TV, everything was destroyed. Really, really horrible stuff. So not that there isn't a seawall being planned for this area, but I'm sure going forward, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, as, as the decades go on, if this area does see, uh, you know, increased hurricane activity or even tropical storm activity, there's no doubt that an area like this would be uh, proposed for a seawall. So, so let's just look at this example here. So the first thing we're going to do is use some scrap paper or, or a ruler and string, whatever it takes, uh, along with the map scale provided to calculate the length of the land you want protected. So here I have a line that I gave you, which is 1,000 meters. And all we would do is take some scrap paper, put it over this line, and just measure out this distance here. I measured it with Google Earth and got a very precise estimate, uh, a very precise number at uh, about you know 16,000 meters, so 15,955 meters. A very long, it's you know it's very long. It's 16 kilometers. It's a number of miles there. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate. Well, I'm sorry. The, the second thing we're going to do is calculate the volume of your wall in cubic meters by using the width and height of your wall. So the length we got, we measured that. I told you that these two numbers were given, the width and the height, and I multiplied them together, right? Because uh, volume is length times width times height. So 47,865 cubic meters. Now, using that number, we're then going to have to calculate the strength of the seawall. So if you chose masonry as your material of choice, okay, that's going to be 135,000 joules per cubic meter. So if we know the cubic meter, we can, we, you know, we can calculate through. So I think for here, yeah, I did steel. So steel is 300,000 joules for every one cubic meter. And I calculated the wall to be 47,865 47, cubic meters. I multiply them together, and I get a really huge number. I get 14 billion joules, 14.3595 billion joules. That's a, that's a lot of energy that this wall can absorb. It's a lot of energy, but you're going to see later that it's actually, you know, the wall needs to absorb that because, you know, the energy of the wave is actually pretty substantial. Now the cost, right? Because nothing is free. So we calculate the cost, again, by using the cubic meters. So again, for each of these materials I have here, a cost per cubic meter, I do a very similar exercise. If you chose steel, it would be $225 for every one cubic meter. Now I know what my cubic meters 
is, I already calculated that, I multiply it together, and I get $10.7 million. <laughs> it's a really expensive, uh, it's a really expensive wall, really, really expensive wall. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue. So part five, uh, calculate the total energy exerted by the wave. So we figured out back here the number of joules that our wall would, would take on. We have the cost. But now let's see how much energy this wave is actually going to exert. So first we have to calculate the area of the wave. So the area is going to be the length of the seawall. So the length of the wave is the length of the seawall. That makes sense. The width I'm just going to give you. The width is going to be 7 meters. So I got 21 foot wide, you know, wide wave. Then we're going to take those two dimensions and we're going to multiply it by the, the length of, of our, of our seawall. So 15,955 meters times seven. Okay. That's our area. Uh, 111,685 meters squared. That's the area of the wave as it, as it hits the, uh, the seawall. The last thing I'm going to do to get the energy, because I'm, I'm looking for joules. That's what I'm trying to get to. So multiply the calculated area, which is right here, by this, this number, which I'm going to give you. It's 5,042 joules per meter squared. Now, this is the given value for an energy of a, of a two meter high ocean wave. That's something that I'm just, I'm just going to give it to you. We could go through the calculation for it, but... It's, uh, you know, we're just going to breeze through that. So 111,685 times 5,042 is 563 million joules. Okay, that again is the energy of the wave that is hitting our seawall. Of the first wave that hits. Okay, uh, that is, and that's it. That's our, that's our mini, that's our mini lesson or flip lesson for today we're going to take what we just learned and apply it tomorrow in a in an activity and we'll have some discussions and we'll talk about all kinds of things so uh be ready for tomorrow if there's, any, if there's anything you're confused about please uh make sure to re-watch the flip lesson and uh, i will see you all tomorrow